Good afternoon, I'm Texar McCusker. This is block two. We are going to be going over unit three alpha. We're going to identify the relationship of basic facts and state general principles about the functions of the HF transceiver module. The minimum score on the block test is a 73%, but everybody's going to do way more better than that. We're going to get hundreds across the board. It's going to be great. I like how I'm hyping myself up here. There are many different HF radios in our career field. Each may be slightly different, but the basics are the same. Understanding the following theory and block diagrams will give you a better understanding of how these HF radios function. We're going to talk about the assemblies, the hub battery, transmit signal flow, clear voice, data encryption, receive signal flow, clear voice, data encryption. And let's get started. We're going to start off with the theory of operations. So I want to give you guys a little bit of a clarification on the difference between an assembly and a subassembly. I'm going to do that by going ahead and forwarding to your circuits and diagrams. If you guys have your C's and D's out while we're going over this stuff, that's awesome and also very helpful. If you do not, that's also fine. I'm going to go ahead and enhance here. Enhance. 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 Okay. Can everybody see? Man, I enhanced too much. Can everybody see this? Yes, sir. This is an assembly. This is a subassembly. When we talk about the differences between an assembly and a subassembly, we're talking about kind of like Bob Ross with his paintings when you do a broad overstrokes view where he's taking that paintbrush and he's putting that little happy sun up there, doing a little broad view of everything that is accomplished within the A2 module here. When we talk about the subassembly, we get down to little specifics. Maybe we're adding a little tree, little little hill down here, a little cloud. He's painting in some stuff. This is very Bob Ross-esque for all of you. Hopefully you all know who that is, or that reference is definitely lost on everybody. Yes, I know who that is. Perfect, he was in the Air Force, so that's why I'm referencing him. A2A1, that's your submodule down here, and that gives us the specifics of what's going on within that assembly there. So if we want the specifics, and I am saying specifics, then we want to look at this little cookie cutter little type thing right here because everybody passed kindergarten so they can understand this. If it's inside of these dotted lines, these dashed lines here, that means it is part of this subassembly. So all of the functions that happen in here happen within the A2A1. If it is outside of those dotted lines, do you all think it is part of the subassembly? No. Perfect. You guys are great today. I love this participation. What'd you do to them, Sergeant and Gaston? You tell them they better participate today? Pretty much. I, like... I like that. I told them to take a nap for lunch, not even to bother eating. And wow. Just Otherwise, they might die in this objective. Wow. 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 Yeah. yeah. Wow. Good well, stuff. you didn't threaten death, so that's that's good. Yeah. Because yeah. no, no, let's no. clarify that. Yes, I would never threaten a student, even though I don't think that was on my... That's good. Yep. Okay. That's yeah. good. Just yeah. you being recorded. Okay. Oh. A1. He did not threaten death. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. A1 chassis. We're talking about the A2 lower chassis. A3 upper chassis. A4 rear panel. And the A5 KDU. If you guys go to table 3-1 in your intermediate maintenance manual, which you should all have sitting in front of you, you can follow along here. One of the first things that I like to talk about here, and Sergeant Gaston's heard me say this a couple times, is the turtle shell here, the A1 chassis. Why do you guys think I'm calling it a turtle shell? I guess I should see if somebody typed something. Nobody typed anything. You guys are trying to go find the TO, right? Just hanging out? Yes, sir, I'm trying to find it right now. Perhaps I should have had them do that before we started, huh? I think I'm great. I think I'm great, too. Alright, I'm just going to press them while they're looking it up in the TO. 
So the reason we call it a turtle shell is because a turtle shell protects the inside of the turtle. That's what it does. It protects the guts of the turtle. The A1 chassis, and also the radio happens to be green, acts like the turtle shell for the radio. It protects the inside of the radio. The A3, the A2, and some of the parts of the A4. So as you can see here, and in your TOs in 3-1, the A1 protects the A2 lower chassis assembly and A3 upper chassis assembly. It receives direct current power from the A4 panel assembly and distributes DC power to the other RT assemblies. Provides a mounting structure for the front panel interface connectors and the A5 KDU. Did anybody happen to take off the front of the KDU? Did you let them do that in class? No, that is not something that we've done. Did Probably a lab. good thing. Yeah. One of the fun things end. is if you happen to take these off, especially if you're programming a large amount of them and throw them into a bucket, then you're going to have some problems because they are what's known as MAC addressed to the device. They are not interchangeable, meaning I can't take the front of one off and put it on the front of another radio. That will not work. They are physically addressed. That is what a MAC address is. So if you broke a KDU, would you have to send the entire... Oh, man, you definitely it? would. Please don't break uh, a KDU. Bummer. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. You, you didn't break a KDU while I've been gone, have you? Uh, don't answer we'll that. Talk All right. We'll talk <laughs> yeah, your class will totally dime you out. All right, A2, it processes voice and data signals. It supervises control functions for the entire radio, and it also contains the encryption crypto assembly. A3 contains the analog RF sections of the radio, a receiver exciter, filters, power amps, and tuning circuits, and the analog output 240 kilohertz, first IF. For A4, we have the rear panel assembly. It contains the radio power supply, provides the interface connector to the batteries, and also has the hub in there. As we know, the hub is used for what? Protecting memory. <laughs> Nailed it. And... If only somebody had helped you out there. So the J9 accessory connector is for engineering development purposes only. It's just like KP when you drop that glass. What happens? Nobody. Nobody's going to yell it? Don't touch it. There we go. Don't touch it. I had to do that. I was in basic. Dropped a couple glasses in the back. Screaming out, don't touch it. Everybody just stares at you. So then we move on to J10, J11. That's our battery connectors. Woo! Got a little crazy there. Oh no, what just happened? Moving on. Go to the rear panel assembly still here. This is the place where the hub battery goes. The hub battery is a green and white battery. I don't know if Sergeant Gaston happened to take one out, but now that it sounds like he might have broke a KDU, I kind of hope he didn't. Uh, we did lose a battery. Alrighty then. I can't tell if you're just being a huge troll right now, or if you're being truthful. No. We did not take one out in class. Okay. Alright, moving on to the A5KDU next. The A5 contains the keypad and the LCD that makes up the Mayor Deus Man Machine interface, also known as the MMI. If you guys go to 3.3.1.1, you can follow along the next couple parts here as I go through these slides and explain things. That's the transmit clear voice signal path. One of my first questions I'd like to ask here, and Sergeant Gaston has heard me do this a few times, is what does voice come in as? What type of signal, analog or digital? That's right, Rada. It does come in as analog. Thank you, Irma Rada. I appreciate that. It comes in as analog. If it was digital, it would be like, beep, boop, beep, boop. And we're not robots, so we don't speak beep, boop, beep, boop. Unless somebody in here is. I don't know. Irma Rada might be a robot. So our J1 audio comes in as analog, goes to the ALC. The ALC is the automatic level control. It's responsible for adjusting those varying voice levels as they enter the radio. So either you're talking really low or somebody's talking really high in a squeaky mousy voice. And it'll kind of make it sound like 
uh, a more level uh, signal as it comes through. And we want it to be a more level signal as it comes through because we don't want it to vary. We want it to stay constant because if it fluctuated, the amount of gain that it had in it or the amount of power or amplitude or whatever coming through it would be affected and would affect the rest of the circuits as it goes through the radio. So we want to keep that constant when it comes in. Next, we're going to digitize that analog audio in the analog interface chip. Now that's chip like computer chip, not as in Lay's or hers. That's not what we're talking about. Why do you guys think we're going to take an analog signal and make it digital? Before I pick on Sarn Gaston and see what he remembers. Let's see. Let's see if somebody types something. He's trolling. Okay. Oh, all right, sorry, Gaston, you got this. So the question being, why do you convert it and digitize it? Correct. Digitize the audio? Because digitized in intelligence requires less space than audio. Very good. It requires less space than audio. It is also easier to manipulate. Next, we go to the VDP. That's the voice data processor. The voice data processor enhances that voice. It cleans it up a little bit, makes it sound more like you actually sound. I compare this to the difference between using a crappy microphone and using a really nice one. You get what you pay for. From there, we go to the PTF PGA, or as I like to call it, the traffic cop. Why do I want to call it the traffic cop? What does a traffic cop do? Absolutely, Airman Rada. It directs signal. It directs signal. Very good. Didn't know it was a cop, huh? Is that right, Sergeant Gaston? From Boston. From Boston? I didn't know he was a cop. All right. We'll, keep, we'll, we'll stop there. That gets a little intense and inappropriate if we continue that. From there, we go to the CFPGA because it is plain text. And because it is audio, we are not going to go up to the modem here, the modulator demodulator. If it was data, we would go up there. From the CFPGA, we're going to pass it along, go to the CDSP. That's the Control Data Signal Processor. All that's going to do is pass it along as well. Our digital modulation is going to happen in our digital intermediate frequency application specific integrated circuit. No, you do not have to memorize that. Our modulation digital analog conversion takes place here. This is the first IF of 240 kilohertz. It is digitally modulated to produce the correct modulated waveform, which I'll explain to you all why in a minute here when we get to the analog RF section, the A3A1, why it's exactly 240 kilohertz. From there, because it's still digital, we need to turn it back into analog. So we send it to a converter, a digital intermediate frequency digital to analog converter. The digital 240 kilohertz IF enters the digital intermediate frequency digital to analog converter, and it is converted to analog. If you forget what that does, D slash A means digital to analog, not district attorney. It is analog 240 kilohertz IF, then it leaves the A2A1. So it leaves as 240 kilohertz. Remember, this is our first IF here in transmit. There is a reason I'm saying that. Before we move on, any questions? Bueller. That's it. Perfect. Thank you, Sarah Rosales. You speak for the trees like the Lorax. I appreciate it. No problem. We go to an attenuator next, or attenuator, as I've heard it called. This is a 13 dB attenuator. Can anybody tell me what an attenuator does? What's the porpoise of an attenuator? That's right. It lowers power level. Very Man, Herman Rade is crushing he, it. He is. He's crushing he is. it. So we're lowering the power level. What do you mean by that? He 
He said, hand me a shovel, Sergeant Cusker. I got you. I, I, I think he does. He's going to take your shovel and he's going to... Dig a hole? Uh, well. It lowers the amplitude without changing the waveform. Okay. You're giving me more like the science-y answers, which is great. But I'm looking for this. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, our bassinet just got here. I got distracted for a second there. I apologize. Yes. Got it. DB. Very good, Rada. Why would we need to lower the overall signal strength? What do you guys think will happen if that if we don't lower the overall signal strength? What do you think is going to happen to maybe some of this equipment in here? Maybe not immediately, but over time, for sure, something will happen. It will explode. It's not going to explode. Why does everybody want to say that? <laughs> Nothing will explode in the radio, okay? Unless you get it wet and then turn the radio on. Or if you're working out on the radio and you have it open, which you will not do because none of you are level 2 Harris certified, so you can't open the radio. <laughs> I love that answer, though. Star Rosales, I love that. Well, you're talking about power levels, so it's like, oh, it's going to, you know, explode. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're talking about power levels, but nothing's going to explode. I like it, though. Better than last group, who just immediately everything gave LORs and judicial punishment. That's true. That's that's crazy. Okay. <sighs> uh, so, Ross has it, it, right over time. Yeah, over time, the, the ability of these devices behind the attenuator will degrade over time. Yes, they will not do the functions that they were intended to do. Very good. Let's see what else we got here. So then we're going to go through this low pass filter and we're going to pass anything that is less than one megahertz and it will also get rid of noise because that is the job of the filter. Once we're through that filter, we're going to go to our mixer here, which is going to produce this output of 140.4 megahertz. But before we get there, I'm going to have you all do some methamphetamine for me. That's right. You heard me. I said methamphetamine. So we're going to take this 240 kilohertz, mix it with 140.16, and you're going to give me the answer. So go ahead and add 140.16 plus 0 0.240. Sorry, Gasson's chomping at the bit right now to just yell out the answer for y'all. No, I'm, I'm astonished. Rada's got the maths. He did it already? He did. It oh. will generate 140.4 megahertz. There you go, Aaron Wagner. Aaron Wagner, way to, way to say it's not on the screen or whatever you did there. I appreciate you sitting there and doing the math. Yeah, I, I watched your two weeks ago class, and they got it wrong like four times. They just kept they, trying to do the math. They did. It was really bad. But at least they tried. Yeah. They, they did. They tried to math. They yeah. tried to math. We don't require you to math in this career field, so it's okay. All right, yes, so it's 140.4, that's correct. And that's why our first IF needs to be 240 kilohertz, in case you all were wondering. That's exactly why. So we're gonna take that 140.16 here, which is called our injection frequency, if you guys did not know that. Did y'all know that was called the injection frequency? That's what I just said it was. You, you just said the 140.16 was called the injection frequency? Yeah, I said IF, but... That's not the same thing. IF is not Oops. the acronym for injection frequency. Injection frequency is the acronym for injection frequency. IF means intermediate frequency in our career field. They are very different. There's way too many acronyms. Oh yeah, there is. Just wait. Just wait. You think this is bad. Just wait. Wait till you get to your base. Wait till they drop you in QA and then you start going... Oh, yeah. You got to go learn somebody else's career field. It's going to be fantastic. This thing oh, no. right here turns into a router instead of a mixer. 
and you're like, no, that's a mixer, and they're like, no, it's a router. It's, it's great. I love it. Anyway, I don't even want to get started on the QA tangent. Yeah. When we get that 140.4 megahertz, that is called our second IF. So remember that. That is our second IF in transmit. 140.4 megahertz. Then we go through an amp because we just went through a bunch of filters and attenuators and mixers and stuff. And once we go through all that stuff, it drops the overall power level or our signal down, whether you guys knew that or not. And then we're about to go through another filter. One thing that's unique about a bandpass filter is it's like going to a concert and having a backstage pass. If you have the backstage pass, they'll let you backstage. If you do not have the backstage pass, you can't get back there. Does that make sense? If you are not 140.4 megahertz, you can't get back there. Questions on that? Pretty straightforward. Yep, we use something called PLL with our local oscillators here, and I'm going to go ahead and explain that. PLL is phase lock looping. Phase lock loop. Oh, okay, you got this? Is she going to explain it? And it uses a separate oscillator. It does. It uses a voltage control oscillator. What does phase lock looping do? There, Wagner. Uh, I don't know how to explain that. Okay, so I got you. I got you. I'll like pull out a nerd reference for you. A low pass filter, and then it's amplified. Kind of. And then it goes through. Kind of. Another. I'll, thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the nerd example here for everybody else, so they can they can remember this. Has anybody played Borderlands Three or any of the Borderlands games? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. It's like a siren using that phase lock, which is actually where I think they came up with it in there. It holds them up in the air, so they're stuck there for a bit. That's what it's doing. It's holding our frequency constant at this 140.16 and sending it around, and this voltage control oscillator is what generates it. So it sends that around, and then it puts it up and injects it. That's why it's literally called an injection frequency, and you can see that from the image here, and injects it into our mixer. So that we have this constant 140.4 megahertz coming through. Make sense? I, I dropped some nerd references. I'm not a boomer. Nailed it. There you go. So I'm Gaston redeeming myself for that kid that called me a boomer last week. I'm never going to forget that. Ever. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Because that stung a little. We got 140.4 megahertz IF is amplified and filtered through the 40 kilohertz bandpass filter and then amplified before being attenuated by a digital attenuator. You'll notice we keep amplifying things because we keep filtering them and attenuating them. That's what keeps happening in here and that's what happens in a lot of circuits. You will drop the signal down so we can get through one specific device and then they're like, okay, just kidding, we need to amp that back up so we can get through another device. And that happens a lot with radios. So we have this thing next and Sergeant Gaston for some reason loves when I explain it this way. We have the transmit gain control, the TGC, not the THC, the stuff that's legal in Washington State, but, ha! Not, but not legal for y'all. There we go. Thank you. Sorry, guys. I appreciate the uh, fake humor. It holds the power <laughs> at the antenna constant while the variable voice levels are coming in. And we want to do that. Why do you guys think we want to do that? Why would you want to hold that power constant? Because your voice levels are going to vary as you talk. Anybody? Cricket. It looks like we might be about to go through some low pass filters, so we don't necessarily want to have varying. Um... Ah, crap! My brain just shot. So you don't want to break. Yeah, you don't want to break those very. Uh, selective and sensitive filters that are coming up next. Perfect. Thank you. Very good. Also, we don't want to fluctuate as we go through our very specific local oscillator right here. I say very specific because it has a variable range from 1.6 to 59.999 megahertz. Adjustable accordingly, according to what? Who adjusts that? Sorry, Gaston, who adjusts that? 
Airman Rada. Airman Rada does? And that's what he said. I would have to say that the operator or the programmer. I would have to say the operator or the programmer. I would agree. Airman Rada, you were you were dead on there. Sure. You guys did. As you did this in class, you put in your frequencies. All this is doing is it's adding in the math here, the 200.399, which if you notice and subtract that from 140.4, you get what? Star Wars always likes when I do this. Oh, Aaron Rodder put 1.6, and I was about to say 1.6. <laughs> well, well, that's not correct for 200.399 minus 140.4, but that's okay. Uh, 59.9999. Yeah, that's the answer I was looking for, the maximum frequency range. Very good. And this is the frequency range for the radio, is it not? Yes. Perfect. You guys are heroes. Outstanding. Let's talk about this thing up here. We use this only when we do not have a amp connected. So if you have the external power amp connected, you will not be using this. If you do have the external power amp connected, you'll be going down here, like it says on our next slide. You'll go down here, and you're going to reduce the signal by 23 dB. Why are we going to do that, Sergeant Gaston? I'm just going to keep picking on you. If, if you do not... Uh, oh, wait, if you did not... Ah, oh, crap. Yeah, I know. I, I, I really, tripped you up with words. You did. You, you threw me all off. So if you decided to use a power amplifier, you're going to drop by 23 dB, so that way you're not blasting out from here to Pluto. Yeah, we don't need to talk to Pluto with HF. Yeah, you just want to hit... Timbuktu or wherever it is that your mission is set. Perfect. But using that extra power would just be too much. Very good. Right, like he's saying, our signal might go through the ionosphere if we give it too much power there. And that's not our intended job. Now, if we are still using this power amp, like he was just mentioning, we're not going to use this final PA down here to push it through these filters. It doesn't need that final power amplification because it already has constant power applied to the circuit. Everybody go to 3-2 and your idiot mini of that, so that's your intermediate maintenance manual. I just tried to speak English there and then completely messed it up. That was good. So the filter is determined by frequency or modulation using this table that you guys find in 3-2. And I want you to tell me if we use a frequency of 13 megahertz, which filter band I would be using. It's going to be 1 through 9, or 8, five. excuse me. Who just said 5? Ward. Aaron Ward. Outstanding. That is correct. So, Sergeant Pusker. Uh, Yo. It's actually Airman Ward rata that i was talking about earlier too so uh mm -hmm. on the appraisal when it's asking how many filters that they will be utilizing and the answer is two i was trying to math i'm not as good at the math as you are mm. so can you explain kind of how uh why it's always two so you know sure paragraph does everybody three, see this one through eight Yes. That's yes, sir. Obviously, not two out of nine, correct? This is your ninth filter. The BCI. It just does not have a number. In addition, I don't even have to do that. We can just go right here. And I can show you in the circuit, like he's saying. So if you follow along with these sweet highlights here, if we are using filter one, we will go up this way. You will come down. You'll go this way. And you'll go down here, come down here, and then we chose filter 5, so we will go through filter band 5, and then we will come down here, we'll go through our high level limiter, which is going to limit high levels, that's what it does, and then we'll go to our directional coupler, and then from our directional coupler, we'll get our visor data, some of that visor data will be sent back, and then some of it some of it's going to be sent here to the bias control, right here. 
boom. That's going to be used to control our final PA to tell it what amount of power to push through. We don't want to push too much power through if we have perhaps a low signal that doesn't need it, or if we have a really high signal that does need it. Maybe we do need more power. From there, we'll go to here. You guys see this? Come through, go out. Make sense? Did everybody see that I only picked two filters out of the yes. nine choices I had? Did that make sense to everybody? Yes. Perfect. And that is only if we're not using amplitude modulation. If you still are using two. amplitude modulation equipment, you are still going to use two. So... Fun fact that he just touched on, because if you are using AME, you're still going to have a frequency programmed in to talk to that HF radio. Okay, so some things that we just talked about. We talked about that high-level limiter real quick and the filters. A high-level limiter, like I was telling you guys, it just limits high levels. That's what it does. It stops that Vizwar from getting back into the radio. It will shut the radio down if it detects a bad Vizwar ratio coming back through. It'll shut it down so it doesn't break these filters in here. They won't even get through. So that's kind of nice. That's a nice feature. And then we talk about our directional coupler. Because we need that Vizwar data for a couple things, like I just showed you on the next slide. We need it to send the bias control down here so it knows how much power to amplify to send through these filters. And then we need it to also pass on the Vizor data to the antenna coupler. So the antenna coupler knows how much power is coming through and how many inductors and capacitors it needs to utilize in order to get that signal out. So you guys can see how all of these things work in tandem, yes? Yes. Perfect. I love, I love verbal responses. From there, we go to the impedance matching, like I said, with the antenna coupler, the coupler tune or has controlled tune data is used to switch the various inductor and capacitor elements into and out of the circuit until a good impedance match is found. As you guys know, impedance is resistance, and it is our total amount of resistance when we talk about impedance. That's what it is. So impedance matching takes place between the radio and the antenna. It is fed to the J7 antenna connector, and we can use several different types of antennas on that 50 ohm connector there. We can use a Nivis. We can use... Uh, any really thing else you can come up with that's an HF antenna, you can use the OE503, the OE505, which is the what? What is the OE505? That's the provided antenna. The provided antenna. Why did they provide that antenna with the radio again, Sergeant Gaston? Well, no, if you have a radio but no antenna you're going to have a bad time and not be able to communicate. Sure, but beyond that, why do we specifically use the whip? Why is it included with the radio? Oh, you don't know. Got Let's him. Try. Let's see. Because it is a nice omnidirectional antenna, so you can... Hit. All of these are great things, but the main reason we do include you it with the radio... Nope, not because you paid for it. It's because it does the 1.6 to 59.999 or 1.6 to 60 megahertz range. Mm, I see. That is why that it's included. That makes sense. Because... A Nivis is not going to do that. It's only going to do HF. What is TGC, Aaron Wagner? She's going to say, not leaving in Washington. Do I need to say your full name? I didn't hear the the acronym. What is TGC? TGC. TGC. <laughs> ah. Anybody? TGC. Uh, the transmit gain control. Oh, way to crush it, Severin Rosales. What is that? 
I'll hand you a shovel. The power at the antenna. Oh, what? While the variable voice levels are coming in. Someone's going to get a hundo. Yeah, it does. Very good. Why is the voice converted to digital data? Sorry, Gaston. Because it's smaller. Okay. I'll piggyback. <laughs> oh, you were just seconding that notion, she said? Yeah, I'll ride, I'll ride that one. You'll ride that? Ride or die? Okay. Roll yeah. tide, right? Mm. <laughs> Alright. Where is the second IF located? We're just going to push on after I said that one. Uh, the... A three A one B. What do you call it? Mixer. Yeah, yeah, the mixer. It's, it's located <laughs> at the mixer. It's actually located after the mixer, but yes, it's the product of that mixer. But yes, it's in the A three A one. All you had to say was the A three A one. We're good with that. That's the analog RF section of the radio. What is the second RF? What's the number associated with that? It's a very specific number. Um, 140.4 uh, 140 megahertz yes <laughs> I tried to do a smiley face there it didn't yeah. work very well it's Gosh. beautiful thank just you I appreciate that We'll just uh, we'll just uh, pretend that never happened and get rid of it. Control Z, if you got Control Z, is that? Oh yeah, thing? I wrote it. <laughs> I was actually looking at the diagram. <laughs> Look at that! Way to actually do what you're supposed to. I like it. I will forego doing the what is the entire transmit path question. Where does digital modulation take place? Tell me about that. Uh, it's in the, I think it, man, it's so pixelated. Uh, A2A1? It is Somewhere. in the A2A1, yeah. Where in the A2A1 does it take place? I just want to see if anybody remembers the name. This is like saying onomatopoeia or supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Digital uh, IF application uh, specific integrated circuit. Almost digital intermediate frequency application specific integrated circuit. Defect. That's a mouthful. It is. It is, and the only reason I know it is because of how many times I taught this course. Not something you guys need to memorize, though. Correct, because if you were following along with your TO, you would know that. So A1 to A2, A4. That's our analog to digitized audio. That's what we talked about. That's what happens there. From A to A1, we get our digital modulation. Our digital analog conversion also takes place in that subassembly. The A3A1 submodule has the IF to final RF, the KDU frequency. This is what's known as the analog RF sections of the radio. Then we go to the A3A2. That's our final boost of power, our final PA there. But we skip that if we have our power amp our external power amp connected, and then we have the post selector filtering because it happens at the end. That's what post selector is. Viswar, vigil, uh, ooh, goodness gracious. Voltage standing wave ratio, almost messed that one up. Data, that's what happens there as well. And then it takes that data and it does a couple things with it. It does the bias control, like we mentioned, for that final PA here. And it also sends that information to A3A5, the antenna coupler, so we can do that impedance matching. And sorry, Gaston, what is impedance again? Bueller. Bueller. Sorry, Gaston. He stepped away, didn't he? He happened to step away at the wrong time. Nailed it. Nice. Resistance and capacitive and inductive. Yes, thank you. That is correct, Airman Rada. Thank you for the science answer. Very good. It's resistance. It's resistance. Thank you. That's that's perfect, too. 
Next, we're going to talk about clear data. And as you guys know, this has a lot less arrows on the screen here because there is a lot less that's happening and a lot of similar things that are happening as it comes through. We don't need to go to an ALC or an AIC or a VDP for many reasons. We don't go to an ALC because it's not audio. So there's nothing to really clean up there. We don't go to the AIC because it's already digital. Comes in, data comes in as digital. VDP, that's again, used to enhance and clean up audio. We're not using the audio, so we don't need to come in through there. And then we go to our DTE, that's known as the data terminal equipment. That's where it hooks up to it in the internals here. And then we go to our PTFPGA. What was that again? What did I call it? He's a cop. He's a corp. Yeah, that's um, a traffic corp. I was trying to Arnold Schwarzenegger that one. Yeah. yeah. It didn't work. That's right. I'm a corp. All right. So then we go to CFPGA. That's your controlled field programmable gate array. From there, since it is data this time, it will go to the modem. So it needs to be modulated on our transmit side. On our receive side, it'll come back through and be called demodulation. From there, we go to CDSP, that's Controlled Data Signal Processor, and it just passes that information along. And from there, it doesn't do anything different than your plain text did. It's going to go through the same exact process for the rest of the radio here. With that being said, we got to talk about encryption next. For encryption, we go through the J1 audio. That's the analog coming in there at the top there. And we can also come through for J3 data because we can encrypt both of these. If it's audio, like I said before, it's going to have the ALC, the automatic level control, where it'll adjust those varying voice levels coming in. From there, it'll go to the AIC, the analog interface chip. That's going to turn it into digital if it's analog. And then from there, it goes the VDP. That's the voice data processor, which is responsible for enhancing and cleaning up your audio. If it sounds like I'm a broken record at this point or I'm repeating myself, it's probably because I am. From there, if it's digital down here, we'll go through J3. If it's data, then we go to the data terminal equipment, DTE. From there, we go to PTF PGA. So we'll meet up with our audio that we had coming in from the top there. And if it's a CC, are we going to go outside of the A2, A4? Anybody? That's right, Airman Rada. Did he say yes? Oh, he said no. Nice. No, you will not. If it was CT, what is CT and CC? What is the difference between these two? Do you guys know? Okay, looking good so far, Aaron Rada. Crushing it. So CT is ciphertext. That is type 1 encryption. Mm-hmm. We'll work considerable cover is CC. What is the difference between them? Well, according to Airman Rada, that is, CC is for allies who aren't cool enough for our type 1. Oh, allies who aren't cool enough? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, more so, we just don't want to share it with them because we're the U.S. and we like to keep things to ourselves. From there, we'll go to the CTFPGA. That's the ciphertext field programmable gate array. And we'll go to something called black audio or data from this point on, if it's encrypted, which it is. And then we go to the BIOP, the black input output processor, which is responsible for system control and status functions as well on the KDU. And then it goes to the CT data here, because it's ciphertext, so they're also going to pass the data along. They really want you to know that. But even if it's CC, it's also going to go through the modem. So any encrypted messages or data are going to get passed through this modem regardless because they are encrypted. They need to go through it. From there, it goes to the CDSP. And from this point on, it shoots out through the rest of the radio just like everything else. Nothing changes. Any questions so far before we move on to receive? I got none so far. Okay. Everybody's quiet this afternoon. That's fine. So from here, I'll go ahead and explain this part for you guys. There's three main differences I'm looking for. The first one is a notch filter. I'll let Sergeant Gaston do his favorite one. Whew. All right. 
this this is big stuff, guys. If you look at the top left, you are going to see an antenna instead of a handset. Look at that. That that right there, antenna. Now you might be a little bit close in, but that is in the top left, not a doubt. Everybody see that? Yes, sir. All right. Everybody gets the point where you're trying to get out there. You guys are great. They are. They're fantastic. And he nailed it. The top and the bottom modules are swapped. The handset and the antenna are swapped in each model. Components are reversed. But there's also a notch filter. When we came through on the transmit side, the antenna coupler did what? What did it do? Match impedance. It matched impedance. Do you imagine that it's going to do anything different on the receive side? I would say I don't think so. I would say you are correct. What about the directional coupler there, Sergeant Rosales? Is that going to do anything different? No, sir. Perfect. What about these filters? Are they going to do anything different? No, sir. Perfect. The only difference is they're going to be called pre-selector filters now because of receive. They happen first. The one main difference that we have here is this thing called a notch filter, which is responsible for improving weak signal performance. It is similar to an amplifier, but it is not an amplifier. I have to clarify that all the time. From there, we go through another low-pass filter. Then we go to our first digital attenuator, which now says AGC. What is AGC, Sarn Gaston? Does that, that mean I'm air guard control? Air guard? Almost. It is... I... You've messed me up. Don't say extra. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Got him. Automatic gain control. What does automatic gain control do? Well... That is going to... That's I gotta look that one up. I can't even play along right now. Oh, Sorry. I thought you were doing great. I was uh, trying to help you would... out. So very similar to TGC, AGC will hold those varying levels constant, those varying voice levels constant, but for the handset this time. From there, we go to our mixer. The first mixer in LO1 produces the first IF of 140.4 MHz. That's right, I said the first IF in receive is 140.4, which is different than the transmit first IF. Is that correct, Sarn Rosales? Yes, sir. <laughs> what was the first IF, Sarn Rosales, in transmit? I wouldn't pick on you if you didn't be the only one in here talking. Um, is it 240 kilohertz? It's 240 kilohertz. Fantastic. Outstanding. You guys are crushing it this afternoon. From there, we're going to go back through our amps here. We're going to go through our bandpass filter once again. It's 140.4. It's still not going to change. There it goes to another digital attenuator. And then we go to our other mixer. And now we're going to take out that signal that we put in there. If you guys notice here, we're going to go from 140.4, and now we're going to subtract 140.16. What do you guys venture that is going to give us? Two forty kilohertz. Perfect. Two hundred forty kilohertz. Very good. Look at that answer. The 240 kilohertz is then routed through the low power filter, amplified, and then filtered by the band pass filter. Y'all see this down here? This is different than the transmit side. Our second IF and receive is 240 kilohertz. Naturally, that makes sense. From there, we go to a digital to analog conversion here. Analog to, or excuse me, analog to digital. And we're doing analog to digital because it needs to come back through all these circuits here that only require a digital signal. We no longer need that analog signal. Not yet, anyway. From the signal enters the A slash D converter before being demodulated at the digital intermediate frequency application specific integrated circuit. The output will be intelligence. What is intelligence, Sergeant Gaston? That is voice or data, sir. Voice or data. Outstanding. From there, if it's encrypted, it's going to go through the top here, through the CDSP, and through the modem again. 
If it is not encrypted, it will stay on the bottom here. And it's going to be called red now. What do you guys think red means? Notice red is not up here. What do you all think red means? Plain text. Plain text. Unencrypted. Very good. Here is where it will be red after it comes through our encryption devices, in case anybody's wondering. If it was encrypted that we sent through, it would still have to go through the Citadel cover thing here, the encryption module, and the A2A5 embedded crypto assembly, if it was CT, respectively. It is still encrypted until it goes through these. Keep that in mind. From here, if it's analog or audio, it's going to go out and we're going to hear it. If it's data, it's going to come down here and it's going to get sent to your computer. What do you guys notice is missing? I, I don't know what it means. I forgot what it stands for, but it's the ALC. Yes, the ALC is missing. The automatic level control. Why do we not need to adjust varying voice levels when you're receiving them? What can you do? Let's say, for example, I was talking really low on here. What can you guys do? You can manually change my volume, can't you? What did you do on the radio if you couldn't hear somebody? Manually change the volume. You can manually change the volume. Outstanding! That is why there is not an ALC here. Very good. Any questions on anything we just went over? Y'all crushed this. That was fast. Uh, no, sir. Honestly, when I was reading it, I got lost and like, <laughs> so I was just like, I was hoping today, yeah, do the, you explain the chart would make sense. Awesome. Did that help everybody? For me, definitely. Yes. Perfect. I'm going to stop this here.